I'm Macy. Aaron. Helen Bowers. Dr. Tasha Alston. Antonio Glaze. Dr. Clyde Wilson Pickett. Anaya Joins. Audrey Morrell. I am. I am. I am. I am Black History. I am Black Excellence. Black Knowledge. Black Intelligence. Black Education. A Black First. I will be the first in my family to graduate with a doctorate. I am Black Happiness. I am Black Joy. I am Black Community. I am. I am. I am Black Resistance. Black resistance looks like persistence. It looks like progression after hundreds of years of oppression. It looks like excellence in the face of adversity. Black resistance is looking at a negative situation that you're in. And the reason why you're in that situation is because you're black and it's not okay. And you do something about it. To be strong in the beliefs that you have in yourself and in your culture, there are a lot of people that might not understand what you're doing or might not agree with how you're saying it, but you have to be rooted in yourself to make the change that you want to see. Whether that means being the first and walking into spaces, whether that means different protests or strikes, you have to be strong in what you believe in because you know that the change that you're trying to have will be better for the people in the future. You know, you still see segregation, um, there, there still are lynchings in different places, uh, profiling, police brutality. You turn on the news and, and you, you don't miss it. It's a lot of subtle things that ultimately strip hope from, from black people. And then just basically bringing that hope back to everyone, putting them in front of people that, are, that look like them, that have uh, been in successful positions, that can talk about their stories and you know, their trials and tribulations. And, basically giving hope back to everyone that if they have a dream, they can achieve it. To me, it's uh, happiness, it's peace, it's black boy joy and black girl magic, uh, all mixed up in one. It's black excellence, um, black doctors and graduate students, um, just students in general. It can look like joy. It can look like, you know, fighting back against oppression in the forms of art, media, music. Um, and it can be as simple as just going to class and just being. Black resistance to me means uh, a history in connection to the fight for progress, the fight for opportunity, the fight for equity, the fight for equality. We know that historically throughout this country, black resistance is synonymous with our experience. Uh, certainly as we think about uh, the civil rights movement, the racial reckoning of 2020, they're both connected to black resistance and an opportunity for us to think about our connection to the fight for progress, the fight for opportunity, uh, and our connection to struggle, and more importantly, to overcome. And so the conversation about black resistance has to do with black opportunity and black resilience. They're interconnected. I look at when I was a student at Pitt, it was kind of a surprise when you walk into a lecture hall and you look around and you're the only black person there. You know, because you do want to connect with people that look like you. And granted, Pitt is a predominantly white institution, but you really just did not expect to be the only black student in a room and you start to question yourself if you belong there. You know, but I stayed, found my community, joined the BAS, the Black Action Society, pledged a sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, and I thrived. At Pitt, examples of black resistance that I've seen are evident in my organization, the Black Action Society. Um, we just, we lift up black voices, we provide a space for black students to experience joy, to excel in their academics, to push back on social issues that they're passionate about. Equity, diversity, and inclusion uh, at Pitt has definitely grown and evolved over time. When I think about uh, when I was an undergrad uh, here um, 20 or so years ago, um, it was a different uh, culture. The university had a different vibe to it. You know, one of the things that is actually not debatable, and I do a lot of work on issues related to access, diversity, and inclusion, 
is the benefit to the organization when we have diverse talent, diverse perspectives, individuals working together. There is no doubt now by the research that many people have done, some of my own, that diversity makes us better. I noticed a strong pivot uh, around the time when George Floyd was murdered and um, the chancellor provided um, a call to action for the institution to look inward um, at our practices. So um, it is a, a, a new day, but we still have a lot of work to do throughout the institution um, to ensure that faculty, staff, and students um, not only feel like they belong here, but they feel like they're thriving here. These offices, the offices for equity, diversity, and inclusion were started because of the activism of students, specifically black student unions, and here in terms of our history at the University of Pittsburgh, the Black Action Society. And we know that their contributions were critical and pivotal towards making a difference in our community and seeding the foundation for offices that would continue the work to push equity. And so as we think about black resistance, we have to give appropriate attention and homage to the sacrifices of those students, uh, the activists who've made a difference, and paved the way for us to continue to progress change and to be where we are today. The future, I imagine, is one where equity and justice exist for underrepresented individuals, especially black, indigenous, and people of color who have experienced racism, oppression, and discrimination that continues to persist in American society for hundreds of years. The stark inequities that persist for BIPOC and underrepresented individuals continues to hinder social justice and access to wealth and economic justice, access to quality health care and health justice, access to quality education and educational justice. During the celebration of black history, it's important to acknowledge that if we're to have any sort of chance of doing something transformational as an institution, diversity and inclusion and, and equity and access have to be at the forefront. Whenever we are in a place that we think of equity before equality naturally, um, I believe that is what's going to make the biggest difference because you're going to be thinking about others whenever it comes to you know, laws that you're putting in place, policies that you're putting in place, opportunities that you're giving people, and you know, people advocating for others as well and using their privilege to make sure everyone has the resources that they need to succeed and thrive. And you know, I think once we get there, that's whenever we'll be at a place where everyone is doing everything that they can and they feel like they have everything that they need to be successful. In the future, I hope that students in the Black Action Society at Pitt in general can continue to talk about what it means to be black, continue to stand up for themselves, for their community, make their voices heard, whether that is in their classes, in the art that they produce, in their extracurriculars, um, just really making sure that their voices are heard. You know, in uh, 2019, a study came out by the city of Pittsburgh, um, the Equity Report, for short. And um, it really um, highlighted what a lot of us, a lot of black Pist Pittsburghers already knew, um, which was that um, black residents here are not thriving. And that's part of the reason why I believe resistance um, is black joy and black happiness and peace. Um, to be able to still step out into the world and be authentic and um, still be happy and joyful. Well, as I think about uh, black resistance today and tomorrow, I'm reminded that education, specifically higher education, has always been a training ground for leaders to make a difference. We think about how our institution now, specifically our students, are working proactively at our university to better themselves, to better our university, and more importantly, to better our community and beyond. And so as we think about the future of black resistance, we know that it starts here because the leaders for tomorrow are at our institution. And so we are the training ground for the next wave of black resistance, the next wave of leaders who will make a difference and will continue to progress change.